Um, I am playing against staking. Just already back to the point. Um, I I just don't understand where or how I would do it necessarily. I, I know like the alternative options, and I, I'm curious about doing it myself, but I'm also terrified of doing it myself. So curious to understand what it would be like to try and do it myself. Cool. Oh. All right. Well, that's exactly what this is for. So um, it assumes um, a little bit of prior knowledge, not with Ethereum or anything in particular to kind of like getting a blockchain set up. We will be doing that, but it's going to be mostly syncing headers uh, in what's called like a light mode. So it doesn't really assume anything related to blockchain. Um, there's a little bit of like, you know, do you kind of get how keys work um, and servers and stuff? And I, I feel like um both of you guys understand that stuff so what i'll kind of do is just like go like a straight through from top to bottom how you get this thing going um and then we can keep this kind of dynamic if you guys have questions while we're going through this um let me know we'll stop and then we can kind of um, stop it um the way that i set this up was exactly I, I went through the process my whole the whole thing again last uh last friday without actually staking the ether uh, and i'm not planning staking another 32 just because i already have a couple of these going i don't i don't need to put another um 32 eth in a, in a thing that um we still don't know when you're going to be able to withdraw so that's something that's interesting about this too so since you are planning on staking again remember that there is no guarantee when this is going you're going to be able to pull that out estimates are uh, now on the order of uh several months to like half a year six months something like that um i just watched half of the newest bankless podcast called endgame with vitalik um where he goes through kind of like the steps through them like up to the merge through the merge and into kind of like eth2 um and he was saying um that uh the merge is about realistically about six months out um but like a lot of the things have already are, are already well kind of like in order um the kintsugi testnet went live uh, which is one of many test nets actually, but it's like a public one. Uh, went live at the end of last year, um, so um, yeah, things are things are moving. But just remember that uh, you know you're putting 32 ETH break chunk of change. You, you might not get it back for another six months, something like that. Mm. So that's um, one thing. And then uh, a little bit about how I set uh, my setup. So how I got to this setup. So. Um, I originally was uh, planning on doing this, or I was doing this actually, on my uh, local machine. So I have this Filecoin miner that uh, we built last year, uh, kind of to like punch sectors and that kind of thing. And it became kind of like this weird side project. Um, turns out Filecoin wasn't going to be a sustainable thing. Um, and um, well, you know, ETH2 was kind of like, uh, an easy option to go with, uh, just kind of have it like, you know, not using its extra cycles, validating on the blockchain. That was cool. It worked, you know, worked totally fine. Turns out that E2 miner is just way overkill for uh, the requirements for, for validating, which, you know, is, is funny because, yeah, it was just way, it was, it was just way too beefy. Um, but it's, it, it's good to see that like, it really doesn't take much to, to run a validator on this network um it makes me hopeful for uh, a a more environmentally friendly kind of uh uh efficient um blockchain on proof of stake so anyways um uh i i ended up pulling all of our validator stuff and putting it onto a very simple light sail instance that doesn't take a ton of um, resources so that's what we'll go through light sail is basically um, a virtual private server it's like the lowest level the lowest tier of server that um I think Amazon offers, I think EC2 is like one step above this. So we'll go through setting up a light cell instance. We'll go through um, installing Geth and syncing uh, your, your node. And that's pretty quick. Like I said, we'll run a, a light node. That was something I discovered is that we could, we could just use that um, rather than syncing the full blockchain. Um, we'll walk through installing Lighthouse, which is the, um, the uh, validator client that I selected for um, you know my purposes, you don't have to use Lighthouse, but it is. Um, I would recommend it, definitely recommend it. And the tutorial will all be about Lighthouse. Every single one, every single client will have its own tutorial. So um, if you choose not to use Lighthouse, you'll have to kind of figure things out on your own. But I can't imagine it's going to be too different. Um, and then we'll go through um, the website where um, 
you basically create validator keys um, and Launchpad walks you through all of the steps. Um, you're typically supposed to start at the Launchpad uh, site, but I move this stuff around just because um, when you're going through this, it takes a long time to sync certain things. So you want to get that stuff going while you're doing all this other stuff. Um, then last but not least, we'll, we'll start the validator at the very end. Um, we, we probably won't be able to start it, but we'll, we'll get it into a state where you've done pretty much everything. And all that's left is to um, start your validator client. So sound good? Yeah. Cool. Um, I don't know who the alien is, but what's up? I see Alex, Alex here too. What up, Alex? We're just getting into it. Here to learn. Cool. Um, sweet. So let's start with uh, launching your, your light sale instance. So if you have this open, Tyler, you can see the first link. Pop that open. Yep. <clears throat> um, you can sign up for light sale, and then it's going to give you, once you're all signed up, it's going to give you this, this page here. Okay, oh, cool. Yeah. All right. So we're on the light sale page. <clears throat> um, basically, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new instance and i should actually probably just cancel that one but we can go back to it just to see what a what a more setup one looks like at the end so um so like i said light sale is like the one of the lowest tier um servers that uh, amazon offers uh you can use it for you know very low demand kind of apps and you know variety of um you know kind of you could run plex and stuff like that on a light sale server um but yeah, it's it's uh, it's a cheap option. It's the reason why I picked it, and um, you know, it's Amazon. This stuff's not going to go down. Uh, which is also probably that's another thing. That's kind of an aside. Like you'll you'll realize that a lot of the blockchain runs on AWS. Um, funnily enough, but anyways, that's a whole different thing. So we're going to be doing this on Linux, um, and I recommend just doing the the plain vanilla install. Um, I'm most familiar with twenty point oh four, so that's the one that I pick. Um, and then you go down here, and I have a little thing here about um, uh, actually downloading your your SSH key. Um, let me see here. Go back to the, why does it do that? It just like kicks me off. Hmm. You guys lost the screen, right? Yeah. Weird. But anyways, we're back. It's like when I change tabs or something. Um, okay, so let me show you this first. Th these are the requirements for running Light Lighthouse. Um, and Lighthouse, again, is the name of the validator client. So um, follow this. This is kind of like the minimum what you want to have. They, have. they actually have like a higher recommendation level, and I just went with the minimum just to see how long it would go. And so far, so good. No, there's been no issues whatsoever. Um, so anyways, this is how we're going to set up our light sale instance so I'll, go back, I'll go back over here um and uh you'll see this 40 dollars option is uh this is monthly is like the option that pretty much what why did it do that hmm. keeps kicking me off all right one more time I'm going to just try and share not my entire screen, but uh, just this window for now. Let's see if this is any more stable. Um, so this $40 option of light sale uh, is, is per month, and it's the, the one that uh, lines up the best with uh, these requirements. Um, so that's the one I would recommend. And um, you're going to have to factor that into your return, right? So um, right now, both of my instance, my, my validators are returning like 8% and it's getting paid in ETH. Um, so, you know, factor $40 less each month for what your returns are. Um, but in my opinion, it's better for nonstop runtime um, and not having to worry about it generally. So um, you'll name your instance. So let's name this um, validator. Um, and then you'll create your instance. But before you do that, you're going to have this option here um, to, I think, download your SSH pair uh, key here. Yeah, there we go. So you open that up. And um, this is going to be pretty important. You don't have to use SSH to interact with your server. I would recommend doing it that way, though, just because you know you don't have to have your browser open and stuff. But we'll, there's going to be a point where we have to actually copy a file 
over from your virtual private server onto your local computer. And there's no really easy way to do that um, without, without having this SSH key um, already downloaded on your thing. So um, you're gonna wanna download this key and um, you're gonna download it to, oh yeah, here we go. So you're gonna download it to, oh, that doesn't show, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay, so anyways, you're gonna, uh, your SSH key is the key that allows you to access your server remotely. You're gonna download this and you're gonna put it in your SSH folder. Um, usually that's in your root user folder. So let's say, you know, you're running a Mac and um, your user is Tyler. It'll be Tyler and then the next one, it's gonna be a hidden folder dot SSH. Um, that's gonna be where you, you're gonna wanna put it. Um, and um, so yeah, we'll, yeah, I have instructions here um, on the bottom here. Um, that's going to allow you to basically, you'll download your, your key, you'll put it in that folder, and um, you're going to have to run this command, um, which uh, changes the um, permissions on the file so that only you can read it and you have to have a password to read it and like some random passerby that happens to see your computer open can't open. Um, your your SSH file because if they have access to the SSH file, they have access to your keys. They can technically you know log into your servers or whatever. So you're going to put a permission on um, your your folder and that key file. Uh, without it, actually, you're not going to be able to log into your server. So make sure you don't forget to do this step. Um, so I'm going to go back here. Let's just go ahead and create this. Create that instance, and then this is going to take you know just a couple minutes. I'll just pop that open. Um, if you have any questions, just shout them out too, because I'm not paying attention to the chat. <clears throat> but um, if you guys um, also, if you have stuff to share, there's a there's a Mochi Town chat um, just above this voice channel. So feel free to just drop any questions and stuff in there. I also put um, I put the Figma file in there for anybody who's following along and wants to kind of take a look at this. All right, cool. So the validator is up. And yeah, we're all good. So um, these are all the same, basically. So we'll go back here. And um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, launching your light cell is very easy. You know, it's just configuring it, basically. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and install Geth. Geth is uh, one of the clients for Ethereum. Um, and um, we're gonna go ahead and sync that. So the basic setup here, I don't have a diagram for this. Maybe I should have made one, but you need something that's like connected to the Ethereum blockchain, right? And then you have your validator that looks at that node to understand where it's at. Um, so the first step is obviously getting connected to the Ethereum blockchain. Um, I have a link here at the top for how to install uh, Geth. Um, but first we're gonna go ahead and open up, right here it's gonna open up a connection to your server. Um, it's the equivalent of SSH being into it um, using your terminal. Um, and you can do all the kind of, you know, like commands that basically that help you navigate the uh, Ubuntu file system. You don't really need to know a ton. I've provided all the commands uh, in here for everything. That you um, so anyways, okay, so we're in we're in the server, right? This is the, the instance, the, the light cell instance that we just uh, popped up. And I have some commands here basically that will help you just um, really quickly uh, download the um all the packages necessary for running ethereum so that's going to add the repository excuse me oh cool we've got a couple of people on the uh got a couple of people in the twitter space What's going on? Uh, um, yeah, there's a couple. Alec and uh, DeAndre. What's up, DeAndre? Um, okay, so, whoops. I don't want to move that whole thing. So the repository is added. We'll go ahead and do a little update. And then we'll install Ethereum. That should not take very long. it's not super quick either um if you want to read some stuff about uh the difference between 
modes that you can run your client on. So there's pop this open just so we can, while we're waiting for that one. Um, if you're not familiar with how the Ethereum blockchain syncs, um, you don't. Uh, th th there's there's this concept of like a full node, and there's this concept of like a, a light client. And um, full nodes are basically like full archival, like they, they record every single thing that happens on the blockchain. So when you want to sync to the blockchain, if you run it full, it means it's going to download every single transaction that's ever single happened since the beginning of time. Um, and I don't know how big that is um, these days. You could probably look it up, um, but it's, in my opinion, probably too long for the purposes of, of we'll, we'll be here until next month, maybe trying to, trying to sync a full node um from the blockchain so in in uh instead of doing that what you want to end up doing is um what what most people will recommend is to do the fast right so it'll it'll actually just download kind of digests um from a trusted node um to kind of get back up to speed and like sync just like a, a portion of the blockchain after some snapshots um but that's not what we're going to do because again get into that actually takes a little bit too just because of the size of the blockchain what we're actually going to do is just sync a light client um, and what light client does is it just takes the headers of every single blockchain and, and it syncs pretty quickly that's the least secure um in terms of like you know network wide you know you're not you're doing the least amount of work basically to get caught up with the blockchain um so you can't have a blockchain full of like clients because nobody can get history deeper than the headers if that were the case. So, and that's done. Okay, cool. So Ethereum is installed. I'll keep this up and you can kind of just see what I'm doing in the terminal. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first is we're, we're going to install this app called screen. Um, if you're not familiar with screen with what screen does, um screen allows you to kind of like launch new terminals like in a way um and run programs in them and detach from those screens so that they run in the background they don't disconnect when you when you um close your terminal from the your your remote your remote connection to your your server um because usually what happens is if you run a command and you close your thing um it, it'll totally shut down everything that you're running so go ahead and install screen and i'll pop open a new screen um and then um we're gonna go ahead and fire up geth and uh notice the the sync mode the flag for light um and then there's also uh the http that allows the node to be discoverable by um i think what will be the uh the beacon node the beacon node needs to see um your ethereum node so that's going to open it up so I'll go ahead and get that started and here I'll switch really quickly just so you can see what it looks like while it's syncing. There you go. Um, so I don't actually know what all this means, minus like looking for peers. So it start, started the synchronization. It's now looking for peers and it's um, yeah, successfully found some. And um, you can see where it started. So um, it's, uh, you see this importing block headers. It's just basically looking at the headers of, of um, each block and it's syncing that. So it's going to be, it's going to happen much quicker. It should be done actually by the end of this, by the, by the time we're done with it. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and do control AD to detach from the screen. So that's now like running in the background. If I ever want to, reconnect to that i can just screen um r and come back to it but i'm just gonna go ahead and detach so we can do some other stuff okay cool so um now ethereum syncing that's done we can move on to the next step um next step is going to be to install lighthouse which is our validator client and we're going to want to sync the beacon chain and the beacon chain is going to look at the you know the, the light client that we just started um but lighthouse is going to be the um the package that has all the things necessary to get onto ETH2 and start staking. So, um, oops, sorry, I have to switch to this screen now. Yeah, that's not great for, um, there must be some setting that's like, maybe, maybe I have to like go into settings and like not have it auto kick. Um, okay. So we're back here and, um, 
I have included links to um, the Lighthouse. Uh, they're like their Git book, basically. Uh, that has all the instructions of how to get set up. They have a link in this link that will take you to the most up-to-date version of their client. So you're going to download the one that's appropriate for um, your server, which is this Linux one, this x86 architecture one. Um, so I have the commands here already for the latest, um, the, uh, the, the latest version of this. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and imagine me just copying and pasting <laughs> this stuff into um, the terminal. So that first one downloads the uh downloads the file the second one unzips it so that's unzip now and um now i can run um this uh, dot lighthouse version and it's going to spit out the version to me so i have um version 2.01-fff01b2 um and now I'll switch back to this so that you can see me running this and you'll see how long it actually takes to, to sync this beacon chain. I started one last Friday and it's still syncing. Um, changing windows so here, here. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and da da da. There we go. So now this beacon chain. <coughs> No, it is um, starting to sync. Um, and I, I don't know that there's, I, I, I do wonder if there's like a light version of this, but um, yeah, this is going to start syncing really quickly. Well, not quickly at all. Um, you'll see these estimated time kind of pop up here once it's fully warmed up and going. Um, and it'll say anywhere on the order of like 10 hours to 15 hours. And um, I checked the other one that I started last Friday. So yeah, it's saying, a, well, this one's saying a day. The other one's also saying a day. <laughs> so uh, this thing is not the most uh, accurate, but um, anyways, I, um, oh, actually here, so I, oops, um, I didn't start a screen. This is why you want to have a screen. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that down real quick. Let's start a screen first. Okay, so now that's now that's syncing. Um, and it's going to take a while, a couple of days. So that's why you want to get this stuff going before you do any of the other stuff, because it's just going to take a while. Um, now I'm detached. Okay. So that's done. We're done with that uh, part. So now we have our light sail instance up. We have geth syncing. And then we have our beacon chain syncing. And we have the validator installed. Um, so now let me switch back to the Figma. Change windows, da, 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 Figma. Okay, so first three steps done. Now we're over here. Uh, this is the longest part, and there's there's a good amount of reading. I'm not going to do it all while we're talking, but um, I encourage you to read through it. This stuff because um, it's important. It's going to walk you through all of the things that you need to know about becoming a validator. And if you're just thinking about it, maybe just click this button. But let's assume that we've read that. And um, here are all the additional advisories. So they do a lot of like, are you really sure you want to do this um, kind of steps here? Um, and they kind of tell you all of the risks and you know what you're getting into. So I'm just going to go ahead and since I already know this, tells you about the deposit. Can you use the terminal? Can you keep it up the whole time? Do you get that um, if you're bad, you're going to get slashed? You know how to manage your keys. Are you committed to doing this for an unspecified amount of time? Do you get that you're an early adopter? Um, check the checklist, and then we'll just go ahead and confirm. So all of this stuff that they're going to throw at us now, we've already done, right? We've selected Geth. Uh, you don't have to use Geth, but that's um, what I'm recommending, and that's where all the tutorial stuff is. And it's going to basically walk you through how to get this stuff set up remind you to open up HTTP. We've already done that, so we're just going to hit continue. And then this is where you choose your ETH2 client. Um, again, we've already done this. I've selected Lighthouse. You don't have to pick Lighthouse. It's not the most popular one. I think Prism actually is. Um, but you want to have some you know, client diversity, is, is the term, in uh, your blockchain network. You don't want everyone using the same client because, God forbid, a bug affected 
it and like if everybody was not 80 percent of the network is using the same client and 80 percent of the network went down then you know good luck so anyways i picked lighthouse i like the uh like the name and um they'll walk you through basically how to install it but we've already done that so we're just going to hit continue now this is where um you say how many validators you want to run um if you're really a whale you know you run more than one but if you're if you're not um or you're just uh doing a little tutorial online you just do one um that's normal 32 eth no big deal it's not a lot of money right um i'm kidding uh we should not say things that make us sound detached like that um you have to pick your operating system obviously we've already selected in, uh, linux and um they're going to have you download this um command line application uh, and the command line application lets you uh, um generate your keys um for uh this this particular um this particular step you're going to generate your validator keys you're going to confirm it um on this website and um so yeah we'll go through that so um if you go there it's going to have you um basically download the latest version of the command line interface for the deposit i have the commands here already so we're not going to go to that page and again you can just imagine me copying and pasting these things into the terminal um so that's what i'm doing right now the first command um, is just uh, downloading the command line interface second command is again unzipping it da -da -da. And then the, the final command is um, changing to that folder that you just um, unzipped and then um, running the command to uh, create a new key. And I'll show you what that looks like once I have that. Um, so it's already pre-populated, you know, number of validators, just one. Okay, so now that's starting. Um, allow me just a second to switch back, stream quality, change windows. Here we are. Okay, we're back. Um, you're going to uh, select your language, so I'll just go ahead and oops, say enter. It's already defaults to English. Um, and then you're going to type a password. Um, treat this like you would treat your seed phrase, like you would treat you know any bank information make it really 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 difficult don't reuse a password um you know this is going to be holding 32 eth take that for what you will um i would recommend you use um a password generator if you have one so you know just fire up a, a like if you have um one pass create a, a new password um so i'm doing that right now you log in I'm going to call it validator and i'm just going to go ahead and have it generate a password for me um again don't reuse a password ever for this stuff oops it's being annoying go away why do you keep okay all right so back here press enter press enter there's my password and here's my seed phrase. You should never show this to anybody the way that I'm doing it right now. Um, but there's no money that's going into this, so that's fine. I don't care. Um, yeah, I totally forgot about this stuff. That would have been funny if there was about money going into this. So um, again, this is a seed phrase. Stash it somewhere safe. Um, I recommend more places than just your um, more secure places than just your your password recovery. Um, the third workshop that I'm going to do. Um, at the end of this month is actually going to be how to set up a recovery scheme for your life or your crypto life at least and i'll have some recommendation in there about how to um set up your kind of like uh, recovery mode um, and where to put your seed phrases and stuff like that so um this will this seed phrase thing will be uh part of part of that so uh, but i'm not going to go through that now i'm just going to go ahead and um put that somewhere that i can find it because i'm going to have to enter it again somewhere and just put it into a text file which again you should never ever do um okay so there we go um okay 
it's not letting me paste it. Okay, I'm gonna have to write it down. <clears throat> Let me try and... one more time. Nope. Okay, it's making me write it. Okay, so you have to write it now. Oh, you know what? I had a space. Yeah. We're already, we're too deep. We have to type the rest. Okay, cool. There you go. So now it's creating my keys. There's a rhino. Um, I don't know how the rhino became the ETH2 mascot, but it is. Um, and there. Okay, cool. So um, the validator keys have been created. These are the keys that um, Lighthouse is going to associate with um, your validator. So it's going to know that, hey, this is who I am, basically, and I'm staking 32 ETH, and all the rewards should go to me. And um, anyways, now that is um, in that folder, and press any key, and we're done with that. So now we're back to this folder, and let me go back to the Figma file. Da -da -da, change windows. Nope, that's not the one. Back to Fig Jam. Cool. All right, so this is going to be the kind of tricky part. So um, what we need to do now is we need to copy the, um, your deposit data um, that was generated in that uh, validator key. It's a folder, basically, and it's a directory in your, uh, your remote server. We're going to need to copy it um, over to our local machine and um, actually upload it to um, this page right here. Okay, so we're just gonna hit continue. So this upload deposit data is um, the topic of this next step right here. And uh, re recall that I said that um, that's why you wanna download your, um, your, uh, your SSH key. The, the one that um, Amazon provides to you and put it in that SSH folder because that's going to make it so much easier. You can just run this command, populate um, populate your this this command basically with your your stuff. Um, and uh, you can uh, basically just copy the file from your remote server to um, your desktop or something like that and and then just drag and drop it. So um, here I'll show you what I mean by like just editing this real quick. so i've I've left it kind of abstract so that you can um fill it in but uh actually forget mine i think it's just gabriel um and then for this one we're going to find the information related to uh the light sale instance that you have so go ahead and do that okay and then um you need your username that's that okay um and i think that should be it so i'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste that into terminal Let's see if it works oops it's a weird space make sure there are no weird spaces it's not gonna work Okay. Oh, so annoying. Um, permission denied public key. Why? I've, uh... Oh, I know why. I know why. Give me a moment. Did that work? No, public key. What's going on here? Users. Uh. <laughs> Just give me one moment, just troubleshooting this real quick. I still haven't fully mastered this whole SSH thing. 
Um, it's really persnickety too, even like with how you like define your uh, directories and stuff. Um, so it's not downloading. But anyways, I'm not going to waste much time on this. You're basically going to download the file um, to your, your local desktop, and then you're going to go to this page, and then you're going to upload it here. Um, and uh, it'll, it'll validate basically that you've done that correctly. You'll get this little check mark here. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I guess I, I didn't really need to show you any of that. Um, you'll have to play around with that command. It's a SCP is a command that allows you to download from a remote, a remote, remote server. Um, but once you're able to upload that, that's cool. Um, it's going to do more of this, like, hey, do you really get what you're doing? Or you under, do you understand, like, you're putting 32 ETH into some beta software? <laughs> um, so it has you, you know, I understand the risks. And then um, there's a risk that uh, the, the link that you actually clicked on to go do the, um, to do this whole launchpad thing is a fake address, like a fished address. Um, so be careful about that, even and and even with this document, right? Like, I I don't think people can go in and, and edit this, right? And I'm not gonna, obviously, like I'm not gonna put in a link here that's going to fish you, but just be careful, obviously, and just double check that the contract address is the correct one. Um, once you've done that, they have a whole another website for this too, just like like absolutely making sure that you are depositing this into the right place. Um, and then after that, it's basically going to have you trigger your. Um, your uh, transaction to submit your 32 ETH. And, um, you know, that'll go and uh, do, its, uh, do its thing. And then the last thing that you're going to do is you're going to go back into your remote, your, your light sale server, um, and you're going to run this command that uh, uh, basically just um, launches Lighthouse um, and it imports your um, your validator keys. So the, those are the keys that um, you had you have generated throughout this whole process. It's going to import that into Lighthouse's database, and um, if you do it correctly, there there shouldn't be anything that you need to do other than put in your password. Um, you'll get this successfully imported the key store, successfully um, updated the validator. Um, I'm assuming you just did one. You know, it'll just say one validator. Um, and then the one thing that's really important is don't. Um, don't share the key stores one don't share the key stores two don't put them if you're running multiple clients for some reason like on two different servers or whatever don't use the same key stores it's going to you're, you're going to get slashed um and there's actually some it's kind of tricky and complicated to like migrate so um because there's a risk of getting slashed um uh, that like, that data gets corrupted along the way and stuff and like things don't get fully realigned um and um there's a risk that you can get slashed for for um having your key stores in multiple places so just be careful about where you keep your key stores and um just be certain that this is the place that you're going to want to keep stuff because it's kind of a pain to migrate I've, I've done it like migrating from my local machine to the server it was really um i was like sweating the whole time you know it's like oh my god i i multiple times i thought i just lost all the money but i didn't so it ended up being fine so that's it. That's the longest. That's the longest thing. Is like, um, it's really just like, are you sure you really want to do this? And they put a lot of stuff in between. Uh, and then you generate your keys. You put the keys into the validator, and um, you start the validator. That's the last step here. So um, you start your validator. Um, open up a new screen, and you'll um, just run this command: lighthouse vc uh, validator validator client um, and off it goes. That's pretty much it. You just, as long as your deposit is cleared, your Ethereum node has synced to the blockchain, your beacon node is fully synced, um, your validator should start validating um, transactions on uh, the uh, ETH2 network. And this is um, a snapshot from beacon chain, uh, beacon, beacon scan. Let me just pull it up. Beacon chain. Beaconcha.in. Um, this is one of the validators uh, that's going on right now. And I think because I'm running mm, like uh, three servers now, or, you know, I, I don't know, like there's something. Um, or I, actually, I don't know if this is missed. I think this is just maybe not updated or whatever. But um, you can see it's like it's the, the software runs pretty great on this, like, very. Um, 
you know, not not a very beefy setup at all. It's not inex totally inexpensive, but um, I think I think worth it um, to pay for having like a you know a server that's you know you don't have to shut off and turn back on and like restart all these things. Um, this this is just going to basically like this this has been running since I started it. Um, when did this start? July, you know, and then you get a whole uh, tracking report on. Um, your your earnings on your on your um, validator from there on out. So um, yeah, beaconcha.in mainnet um, is where you go to kind of look at it. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I know there's a lot. Let me know if there was any part of this that um, hopefully because it's kind of technical. Hopefully you'll be able to kind of just like go through this and remember some of the stuff. But like it's it's pretty laid out. Like what you have to all the commands and stuff. I've I've um, put into these like little command snippets. So. It should mostly be a copy and paste job as long as you understand what's going on in each step. Um, but let me know. What do you guys think? Um, is there anything that we want to go back to or specific questions? No, that was great. I just appreciate that you told us how nervous you were doing the migration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds, yeah, I would be nervous. Yeah, that was... um. I was sweating. Yeah, you, you, you know that um, that meme of um, I don't know what it is. It's like you know picking between the buttons, and it's like the guy like dabbing his forehead. <laughs> That's kind of what I felt like. Yeah, because it's, there there was like something when I was trying to import my keys, and it was just like this is like I don't remember what the error was, but it was giving me some error of like oh. You know, there's there's mismatched information, whatever. Um, you can go forward, but you risk getting slashed and whatever. And I was like, oh god, what does that mean? You know. Um, but anyways, we went through it and it was fine. Yeah, uh, so much of this is just like so terrifying. I want it to be simple and I want it to like be accessible, but yeah, I don't know. Every time I, like, think about doing this, I go back and forth. I'm like, well, I want to. I'm also, like, don't want to. <laughs> just, just don't want to go through with it. I don't know if I'll ever make a decision on playing the trigger or if I'll end up with something just like Lido or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I mean, what's Lido paying right now? I think it's, like, five or something less, like, four point something. Okay. Um, yeah, that's so like, you know, four. So you're losing out on, you know, maybe three and a half percent, three and three and a third or something like that. Um, which is not nothing, but it's also, you know, you, you figure in, I don't know, going through all this stuff, like the time to like learn this. I don't know. I've, hopefully that this, this cuts the time for that. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's just, I don't think there's a ton that could go wrong in like getting it up it's just like maintaining it there was a point in time where like um there was a there was an upgrade for altair and like it was like you have five days to upgrade otherwise you risk like being on the wrong fork you know like the wrong history and like i just happened to see the notification on discord that day you know like if i wasn't paying attention that day i would have not seen that and probably just like let this go on for another week without thinking about it which is actually what happened with um with the filecoin miner like i spent a month and a half two months pledging sectors and then there was some update uh, um that i needed to do and like my my um whatever my client like just like it crashed and like i didn't think to check on it uh like i was traveling or something and i came back and it was just like your sectors are all gone um so you know there, there's stuff like that it's like you kind of have to be down to you know kind of yeah do the do the thing you know it's like you it's 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 not it's not like no maintenance there's some maintenance it's not a ton of maintenance like i said this has been going like this has just been kind of running for the past um you know since july but i do check it periodically to see what's going on um and honestly going back through this process um was helpful and good i needed to do it again so just so that i was understanding what was going on there it's 
three and a half percent is not bad. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I go back and forth every time. <laughs> Looking at this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was your, um, was, like, there was a whole was thing on Twitter yesterday, today, going around about people don't want to run their own servers, and like, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't know if you saw that thread or anyone saw that thread. Um, it was, I forget, some pseudo famous, uh, or like pseudo Twitter famous tech guy who was tweeting, like, probably some VC guy. I don't even really know what where he's from, but. I feel like there is a lot of interest in like people doing these things. It just seems like the yeah, I don't know the ways of interfacing are so like backdoor for I think from like a user perspective, it's unfortunate that this is where it is today. But hopefully, um, people will be pushing on making these things just simpler for folks in the future, especially if there's real rewards tied to them. Yeah, yeah, it's um, I don't know. Yeah, like, like I think. The thought of launch, uh, you know, spinning up a server to install a couple of like beta clients basically and like having to kind of walk through every single command and whatever, it's just not, um, I don't know, it's it's targeted to a certain kind of demographic and, you know, they, they do have servers that are pretty easy to launch for other specific, more user-friendly things, you know, like the Parsec server. Um, the Parsec machines VJ put me on, where you can like, you know, basically spin up your own, um, your own machine that you can access remotely and use to play games and stuff. And the latency is pretty low. Like, those mm -hmm. are pretty good. But yeah, there's, I don't know. I I, I think it might be that, uh, and Lightsail might be more technical than the other ones. Like I don't know, maybe Prism is actually not as difficult to get set up, but you still probably will need to set up a a VPS. You still probably will need to, you know, um, you're gonna at least need to um, run through the uh, the launchpad stuff, right? Which involves you kind of transferring files from a, from a virtual server onto your local server, and you know that's that stuff. Honestly, took me that's that's the stuff that took me the longest to figure out. It's like, well, how do you run these like very simple commands, and like they just don't work, and they don't work, and it turns out you're just missing like a slash. Because it's persnickety by you know the way that it it operates and um, that stuff like was the most frustrating, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's so now you see like what that three and a half percent <laughs> is worth, <laughs> or like what's what's required, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I really appreciate you walking through all this and putting together the Figma and everything. Super super clear. Um, helpful to to see it laid out like that and and everything oh cool. yeah appreciate that um thanks for the feedback and thanks for joining um clearly learned a ton about how discord um <laughs> streams i don't know what the deal is uh it's not stable for a whole you know i wonder if it's my computer or yeah i tried looking into it it's something about the hardware acceleration um but yeah mm -hmm. it could be some setting yeah, great, uh, yeah. great talk, Gabe. Um, like, what do you think about uh, client diversity? Like, if if you had like a set of clients, would you just make them all the same, or you know, spread it out through like Lighthouse or Teku or Prism? Um, on a local level, I don't know. I guess I've never really had to think about it. Um, I do have to lighthouse clients um, okay. i think it matters more on an absolute level than a local level on a, on a global level i should say right like it it, it, should, it matters more if you know 50 percent of the network or like 70 percent of the network is running prism more so than it matters if you're running seven you know if, if you're like two-thirds um prism locally and like one lighthouse or whatever i mean obviously if everybody was you it would amount to that same thing but i don't i don't think it matters that much on a local level gotcha gotcha yeah that makes sense and then it's just simpler you just have to deal with one or else you'd have to like one gets updated and then yeah. you know it'd be off um, yeah i think i think for yeah simplicity's purposes you want to get comfy with at least one and they're both they're all doing the same thing I don't think 
there's an advantage really to running you know like like i don't think one of them is better than the other it just depends on you know who makes it how comfortable are you are with their their instructions and do you like their support community i guess i don't know gotcha yeah i think it, um it could still go a step further like still be this technical where you know you have to get into a terminal but with some like just a few scripts it could just be like running a sh file because i remember setting up for the medallia testnet and um in the beginning i tried it and i was like oh man this is uh this is way too long like this is they need to automate some of this and then later i i went in and then it was just an sh file it's just like zoom sh or whatever yeah, yeah. Like, oh this is awesome like, yeah it does it all for me um so I think we um, we can improve on that a little bit, and then get to a medium where you know it's not it, people can still reap the whole benefits, but it's not as uh, kind of a intimidating, I guess. Yeah, it would be great if uh, you know it's like this could just all like basically steps for you know like steps two through five. It's like you yeah. know. That would be great if it, it could just be a, a thing. But you have to, at some point, you know, deposit your ETH. And I think they they really broke it up, at least at step four, right, to make sure that you know what you are doing, um, you know what you're getting into. Because, yeah, God forbid you, like, sent 32 ETH into a black hole or uh, didn't, didn't realize that you couldn't um, withdraw it for, you know, a year or something. 